next movie and go to Iowa Dogs. Iowa Dogs. Dogs. So you uh, guys saw it. What did you think now? This I, is Wes Anderson's stop motion. Yes. He and likes, particularly with animals, is when he does his stop motion That's his animation. thing. It's only animals. Yep. It's a fox, dogs. That's okay. it. So cat next or yeah, triangular ears? Yes. Four, four yeah. legs. <laughs> that's it. That's all he does. <laughs> and uh, interesting, this is the longest stop motion film of all time, beating out Coraline by two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, God somebody beat Coraline. You know what? It's not like when rich guys make their yacht like two inches that's larger. Yeah, than exactly. The other rich guy. Exactly. Like, well, we, it doesn't need to be two minutes longer, but it's going to be. Oh, your private jet seats twenty <laughs> people. Mine seats twenty two. Yeah, yeah. How's that and, sound? And uh, I love to because stop motion two minutes. That's probably like another hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> right. Oh God, <laughs> that was like another yeah. eighteen months <laughs> yeah. of, uh, <laughs> of moving the, the characters. Um, now this is a sentence I've never. Um, thought I would read. The movie was influenced by the work of Akira Kurosawa and Rankin Bath's stop motion Christmas specials. <laughs> That's a very unique childhood. Yes. That's, That's you <laughs> watch the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and then Seven Samurai like on the same weekend. Exactly. And it what's so weird is like you read that sentence and you, if you've seen the movie you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, it kind of is." Yeah. Who are your favorite actors? Yeah. Uh Toshiro Mifune and Burl Ives. Yes. That's, oh no, Rashomon. Yeah. And it, it was uh, <laughs> Looks like those samurai are certainly in for some trouble. It was such a fun movie, too. And it was uh, the premise of the movie is that it's uh, near future Japan, uh, and all the dogs have gotten sick, and they have to move them all off onto Trash Island. So oh. they're being um, basically relocated there. So all the dogs are off the Isle of Japan. And uh, so uh, part of the story is actually kind of dark. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Wes Anderson definitely doesn't shy away from You know, it's a PG 13 for stop motion which is, uh, you know, unusual. And it's also um, unbelievably well cast. Like, it's got a ton of stars in it. It's got everyone from Bill Murray to uh, Brian Cranston, Jeff Goldblum, and it really feels like um, they were all together doing a table read because it, it feels so casual oh, and right. so fun. And just the way they, uh, they speak, it just feels like, and this is a credit to Wes Anderson and his writers, uh, like Roman Coppola and I think uh, Jason Schwartzman also helped write it. It just feels conversational. Right. Like like they, uh, uh, and it turns out Jeff Goldblum actually wasn't uh, there. He was, because of scheduling conflicts, he couldn't go to England to record his lines, but it feels like everyone was in the room together. Because a lot of times with animation, it's recorded, each character is recorded separately. So, um, but it feels like Wes Anderson, no, we're getting everybody but Jeff Goldblum together and we're going to record this uh, all as a... Uh, a table read. I mean, Edward Norton's in it. Brian Cranston. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Scarlett Johansson. And it's just a really fun, fun movie. And But what, what's what's Kalichi great about it, too. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Greta Gerwig. Yeah. Francis McDormand. And, you know, not everyone has a ton of lines, either. Like, some of the characters are only on screen for, like, a couple of scenes. Um, but, you know, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson, he... Um, you know, he's made like nine movies now, something like that. Yeah. You know, to be in a Wes Anderson movie is a, uh, you know, you're in for something interesting and special. Yoko Ono. So has, Yoko, does a voice yeah. in this movie. <laughs> Yoko Ono even does a voice. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah scroll yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Oh my God! Assistant and, scientist Yoko Ono. That's amazing. And here's the uh, here here's the crazy thing that I didn't think I was gonna like or that I didn't think it was gonna work. Like uh, there's a disclaimer or a uh, a card that comes up at the top of the movie saying that uh, all the dogs barking is translated into English, so you can hear what the what the dogs say. But everyone else speaks in their native tongue, so all the Japanese characters speak in Japanese. Sometimes they're translated. Sometimes they're not. So uh, sometimes you just that's, hear Japanese speaking and you have no idea what they're saying. That's so great. That's why Wes Anderson <laughs> is such an innovative filmmaker. And we've said this before in the show. Even like some of his movies, like Steve Zissou or whatever, that sort of missed the mark. They're right. still inventive. They're still interesting they're still to watch. There's still something interesting, yeah. You know, and it's they're always fun. It, it actually gave it a little of that, uh, uh, that, that Godzilla feel when there wasn't the subtitle. Because right. that happens in the old Tohu thing sometimes where, where mm -hmm. you're just... Like, oh, they just didn't subtitle this part. But I can tell they're angry, so it's fine, right? right. Like, you yeah. get the yeah, idea. Yeah, you can so. figure out what's going on. Yeah. I can tell what the boy is saying to the dogs. Yeah. 
So uh, the set design was really interesting, like, you know, especially with a stop motion movie, you know, the sets were designed and made like right, you know, physically, you know, it, it wasn't everything generated in a computer, you know, that they were made in the, you know, the dogs were made and they were being with moved alpaca slowly. wool. Yeah, yes. <laughs> with Actual alpaca, alpaca wool. wool. No kidding. Yes. <laughs> um, so it was a, a movie that also visually it was very rich, too. And Wes Anderson is the kind of filmmaker too. Like I, I'm hit or miss with his movies. Like um, I kind of tend to really like the ones that don't get as much uh, heat and traction. Like uh, I really like Darjeeling Limited. Mm -hmm. That uh, and like well, did okay, but uh, Grand Budapest Hotel I really liked. Whereas again, like, how inventive was that movie? Yeah, I mean very Wes Anderson. I mean it's yeah. oh, yeah. you know it's mm -hmm. his you know film. Who it is from the media from start to finish. But yeah. On a unique way yeah. of... Now, Moonrise Kingdom was the one that everyone liked that I also liked, too. But, like, ones like uh, Royal Tenenbaums and Rushmore, everyone loved. And I was like, well, I, I like these other ones better. You I just know? forget Rushmore yeah. is him because yeah. it's so yeah. popular. Mm -hmm. right. You know, beyond Yeah, beyond. that one's yeah. huge, huge. And uh, uh, so this is his second stop-motion movie. He did Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, but what I love about Wes Anderson is that, you know, he can go from... Grand Budapest Hotel to do a stop motion animation movie, you know, not a lot of filmmakers can jump mediums like that. Like they, oh, this is a, this is a live action director. This is an animation director. You can't do both. You know, there's right. there's that. You know, you there can only do one or the other. Yes, you can. No, How dare it. you? Yes, don't even try. You won't be able to do it. Uh, and so, to be honest, some of the filmmakers can't make that jump. He can. Um, so I look forward to his next film or his next stop motion film. But it was so inventive like it was the kind of movie that like it's a wes anderson movie it's it's a movie that only he could have made it's the movie that you know has his voice from start to finish and you know even you know there's a couple credited writers like i said it's roman coppola and jason schwartzman um but you know he has final say on every line of dialogue and every shot and and it, it shows through for sure yeah it the if i had a criticism kid, of it bring it with you What's that? Did you bring a kid with you or you saw no, it on your own? No, okay. saw it with my wife, mm -hmm. who's a child at heart. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to have more fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually kind of want to watch it again now that I know what kind of movie. Because it's a... It's, when I say this, you're gonna think it's the wrong thing I'm saying. It's a dirty movie, not it is, not a dirty, dirty like sexy movie, but like just filthy. Like it, they're on Trash yeah. Island, yeah. Uh, and I think that kind of threw me off because it's so Wes Anderson, so downplayed. The conversations mm -hmm. are so just normal pace uh, that I was like, oh, this is this is not a, a dog romp. This isn't <laughs> a secret life of <laughs> it's dogs. Not like what, bro? <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's no. good all the same. And the uh, the actors are so well directed. Not only do they feel conversational, like sometimes in, with animation, if you have a poor director or poor casting, you just go, "Oh, that's Brad Pitt's voice that's you know on this right. in this animated movie." Like uh, uh, with them, like you know Ed Norton, Brian Cranston, Bill Murray, they really felt like you were watching the dog say all these lines. Yeah. So they 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 really. Uh, and this is a credit to the director and the casting, where it's... And the, the alpaca wool. Yeah, and the alpaca wool. Yeah, yeah. which was divine. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brian Cranston brought his chief, I think was his character, onto Colbert. Oh, really? And, and it's like as big as your hand, uh, you know, and it's just it's just amazing because, you know, and they talk about the whole stop motion, how long it takes and everything, mm -hmm. but th those things are tiny. Really That's small. crazy. I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. I guess it would make sense that it's that small. And yeah, then... mostly alpaca wool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's why they're so small. The alpaca wool is too expensive, yeah. so you couldn't make a full size. Yeah, that, that must be it. Yeah. The alpaca wool budget alone on this movie. <laughs> oh, you don't want to know. Mm -hmm. You don't want to know what it's like. So, well, that's cool, right. though. I mean, I you know, I I didn't see. You might like. I, I know you don't have kids, but uh, you know, I think you would like this movie. All right. I think you would. But it is for kids. It's kind of uh, no. it's it's a Wes Anderson movie. It's it's that Pixar uh, middle where you could see it without kids and enjoy it. Where it's not like a, it's not for kids. I mean, it's there's some dark parts in it for sure. It's not for young kids. Either. No, it's like, definitely it's not, not a, for young. It's not kids. a tween movie. It's a teen and above. Yeah. Oh, all right. It's uh, okay because there is some there are some dark themes as far as like uh, you know relocation camps and you know oh, wow. things like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a death that got me very angry at first. Yeah. <laughs> it played out. Yes, and I, it did. I understood. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I think I'm going to see it. I'm going to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Dogs. Bad shot, fuck!
Bird. Well, the kitten 